This is the 17th season of Bass Talk Live with your hosts, Mark Jeffries and Matt Pingrak. BTL is brought to you by Lorenz, Bass Cat Boats, Apco, Duck and Fishing, Strike King Lures, Sunline, Big Bite Baits, Spro, Exo Lures, Yamagatsu, The Bass Tank, and Denali Rod. PTL coming at you. Good Tuesday, everybody. Welcome once again to another edition of BTL Bass Talk Live, where Matt and I are going to talk bass fishing and anything else that we want to talk about. Matthew, how you doing? Good. We get a little sneak peek of iCast today, don't we? Uh, that is the plan. We're going to have Mark Copley on who is the media director for Strike King. And uh, he's going to give us a little indication of what's going on with Strike King and Lose and what else is going on there uh, one day prior to the opening of ICAST. So we'll get into that here in about 15 minutes. Dude, do you notice anything different? About you or the studio or what am I supposed yeah. to be looking at? Yeah, what's going on in the studio? I made a slight modification. Can you tell? You have the dots on the back of your screen? <laughs> There's it, not a shortage of blue dots around here anymore. Is that a new screen or something? <laughs> no. Is that like a... What is that? <laughs> it's blue dots. You literally put blue dots on the back of your screen. Yeah. Are those actually there or is that superimposed? No, it's blue dots, man. <laughs> Wait, you took the time. And what was funny... Folks, that... Okay, so I thought it was a screen. He took the time. He actually... Those are like paper blue dots that are like stuck to the back. That's very well played, Mark. <laughs> what was really funny, folks, is earlier when we were getting ready for the show, uh, all of the printer paper is located just to the left of that screen. And he was all around the screen the entire morning and never said a word about it. No, well, I don't notice those things, Mark. <laughs> the question is where where are those blue dots located? Oh, no, no, I'm just kidding. We're done. We're not going there. We're not going there. Uh, we are actually going to talk a little bit about blue dots, but nothing nothing even remotely close to the conversation yeah. that we had earlier. Now, are you but, fishing no, those you like blue that? dots left or right-handed? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, a tremendous amount of feedback yesterday about the left hand right hand thing. Man. It is. That's a thing. Like I said, I, that's been around for a long time. Yeah. The deal because I remember remember when it was like a big deal. Everyone tried to switch, and I yeah. I was unable to switch, and I just learned to flip right hand or flip left whatever. I learned how to flip with the uh, with the hand. And that way, my rod action and hook set didn't change. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're actually having to switch hands to learn how to use a reel on the other hand, your entire jigging motion, your feel, and your hook set changes. So I yeah. thought it would be easier to learn how to flip with the hand and keep the reel on the same side. That way, you still have your exact same motion. Yeah. It's, the, the weird thing to me is the spinning reel. So I... I I'm like a monkey humping a football with a spinning reel on the other side. <laughs> like I mean, it's like I can't so reel it. Left-handed? No, I no. reel my spinning reel with my left hand. Reel right. it with the left hand. Right. I cannot reel it with the right hand. But the bait caster, you obviously reel with the right hand. I know. Now it's you look at some of those guys out there. It's the, it's actually painful to watch guys reel right-handed because there's a number of guys who do it. And it's yeah. just how you're... You know, there's guys who will cast their spinning reel right-handed and then switch it to the left, yeah. but it's weird how natural, and I've never really thought about it, how natural it feels to work a spinning rod with the right hand, but work a bait caster with the left hand. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's just muscle memory and time. Yeah. Uh, well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, see if there is a run on left-handed reels after what Seth Fighter done. All right, I want to get into a little bit more about Seth Fighter, I was looking yesterday at some of the stuff on the web, and if you happen to check out the Fox Sports website. The Fox Sports website. As you get a text. Must be important. That was about a potential new commercial spot that, oh, the, that, that has I've run been. its course, apparently. 
Uh, have you checked out Fox Sports? After I, I have, fighter, I don't think I've ever been to Fo- uh, Fox Sports. FoxSports.com. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Uh, no, did he make it? No, he didn't even make it. In fact, there is not even a classification or sub menu that has anything to do with bass fishing that I could find. Maybe I maybe I'm just totally clueless, but I looked and looked and looked and could not find it anywhere. Which brings me to a question of do you think that Fox Sports is going to do for lack of a better term the car wash with Seth Fighter? Oh, where they run him through all of the Skip Bayless and all that all stuff. All the shows that they have Cuz he's with on them, Fox. isn't he now? Shannon Sharp? Yeah. They've got a number of Oh, they got some big, big time people over talents. there. Yeah. Here it is on Bass. It is on there. It is on Fox.com. I think that's the Fox News. FS1 competition, the highest level of professional bass fishing tournaments. So where is that at? No, it's just a, it's like a landing page to where you can click on it and watch. I just Googled. Uh, so did you go to Fox Sports? Yeah, here's a article on the yeah. Fox Sports press pass when they signed the deal. Yeah. But I do not see any, I didn't see uh, any mention. Like of, a page for him. Yeah. Huh. Well, it, I mean, I knew it would typically, when ESPN owned it, they would mm-hmm. typically get a top 10, right? Like, hey, Kevin, no, 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 number seven. Let's go to yeah. bass fishing. Bass fishing? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Kevin Van Dam. He for caught that a, night. Caught a seven pounder, number 71, half a million dollars. And then they go, half a million dollars for bass fishing? Yeah. And then he'd be on Mike and Mike the next morning. He'd do a little segment on Sports Center. Yeah. Uh, he would do a couple of the other shows, and that's what you would call the car wash. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going through everything that the network has to offer. Now, I don't recall, and fans, you let us know, because I do not recall them doing anything with Hank Cherry on Fox Sports. Do you? No, I mean, maybe I missed it. I don't know. So, full disclosure, Yeah. for the last four months, I haven't been able to find the remote control at the house. <laughs> That actually switches it to like network TV. So we're stuck with Hulu and Netflix, Prime, and Disney Plus. You know, you can buy one of those remotes. They're like 10 bucks. It's got to be somewhere. Like (laughs) the dog eating. I have no Frenchie eating a remote. No, she doesn't chew on stuff. Okay. It's. It's a conundrum, Mark. <laughs> so literally, it's just been on demand. <laughs> you have no idea what's going on in the big about, bad wide world. Since about April, I missed. Uh, I missed all of the yeah. NBA playoffs, most of the NHL playoffs. Anyway, everything. the the point I'm trying to make, and and fans, let me hear back from you, just like we have all the other stuff. It would seems because Fox Sports. FS1 and everything else, the, the the whole entire network, they have skin in the game on this bass fishing thing. Multi-year deal. Because it is a revenue share on all of the commercials. And they're adding the open, so obviously they're happy yeah. with what they've seen from the Elite Series. Yeah. And it was, I believe, the second most, was it the second most watched classic, they said? That I don't know. I, I can't stay on that. I'm it not sure It was the second most something. Attended? Was it attended? I don't know. Anyway. Watched, attended. So there you have it, folks. Send us some feedback on that. If we're missing a boat on that, let me know. But I have not seen anything where Fox Sports is building up what Seth Fighter did or even what Hank Cherry did winning back to back Bassmaster Classic. Yeah, typically, so let the, me know. With as much coverage as they had yeah. on FS1, you would think that Hank Cherry would have gotten the lion's share of that. Typically, I was remembering, I don't ever remember ESPN doing anything with the Angler of the Year. It was always yeah. the classic champ. Yeah, and that is correct. Yes, they are placing uh, selected open events on FS1. Correct, Matt? Yes, yeah. the last ones of the year. I have, yeah. I, have, I have moved the couch about six times searching for that remote. <laughs> Grand Lake is going to be one of them, as I recall. Yeah, it should be Grand. I think it was the last event of the year. So it would be Grand Lake, Thousand Islands, and yeah. Lake Norman. Yeah. Bucks and six tonight. I agree with that. All right, moving on. Oh, it's still going on. Yeah. <laughs> it's game six. Oh. Didn't they get down 3-0 or something? No, that was uh, like three series. 
Oh, okay. ago. So anyway, uh, I want to let everybody know. Last night we had our first locker room session with Frank Scaly. Really? Two individuals came on last night. We spent an hour with each of them, and Matt, it was really, really cool. Nice. And I'm kind of getting a, a, a side benefit from that because I'm able to listen what Frank is telling these individuals and picking up some nuggets. But the feedback from the guys, they, they were enormously pleased with what Frank told them. And it, yesterday was a wide variety. Uh, the first gentleman was on the West Coast, uh, brand new to the game from a tournament perspective, wanted to know some information on uh, – Boat usage, okay. Boat control mm -hmm. uh, in rough water. Wanted to uh, get some key ideas from Frank on how to retain information that he gathers from his time on the water. That's a smart question. Yeah, I was thoroughly impressed. And then the second guy was really trying to improve his uh, homework, his knowledge base on how to read maps mm -hmm. like paper maps paper well i Any even, you're looking map. at the navionics and yeah or whatever it is so an unbelievable first two locker rooms with frank and uh the the feedback has been overwhelming uh i actually had to pull it off of basszone.com because we're like jam-packed we have over over 50 60 people that want to do this thing so we're going to try and get them in uh before the end of the year but many, many thanks to all the people that are going to take part in Frank Scalish's locker room. Uh, enormous success last night, and hopefully the success will continue. All right, something that we did not mention, Bassmaster came out with their top 100 list for lakes. Did you see the top 10? I know we talked a little bit about, uh, about this afterwards. I'm actually going to... Uh... Yeah, their number one lake... Lake Four. That's what you said. And I think there were three lakes from Texas that were in the top ten. The, it went Lake Fork, uh, the California Delta. Yeah. Which actually uh, surprised me. A little bit. Um, Santee Cooper. Which is a bit of a surprise. The St. Lawrence River. No surprise there. Clear Lake in California. No surprise. So here's, here's my question after the top five. Yeah. Are we going to California next year for the Elite Series? I hope so. Because a lot of this, I don't know how they actually come up with it. In my mind, they kind of mirror some of the stops that they go to. Would you not agree? I agree It with kind that. of builds up yeah. some stuff. I mean, you know, sometimes they have deals with Texas Parks and Wildlife or Pure Michigan or I Love New York, multi-year deals. But then they have two California fisheries yeah. in the top five and the last time that there were back-to-back -back California swings. Now, I know they did Sacramento and Havasu, I believe, in 2015. But yeah. what was the last year that there were back-to-back -back California swings? Was it 2010? I think so. That's a long time ago. Yeah, I think so. So do you think, especially after the canceled West Coast swing several years ago from the Elite Series that was on the schedule... Yeah. Do we see when the schedule is announced for 2022, do we see a West Coast swing? I, I hope so, but deep down inside, I don't think we're going to see it. No. I really hope they do, but I do not believe that they're going to make the jaunt to the West Coast. Uh, Sam Rayburn comes in at number six. Lake yeah. St. Clair comes in at number seven. Jordan Lake in North Carolina at four. 1400 acres comes in as the number eight bass lake it's interesting in the country yeah uh oh ivy in texas obviously we saw what went down there after that crazy cold snap and all the yeah. crazy numerous people and then number 10 yeah. pickwick lake interesting uh no gunnersville in the top 10 right no hartwell in the top 10 Grand no, had been in the top 10. No Florida Lakes in the top 10. It's kind of a different... I, I'm that really, really surprised Coeur that there's... Delane, Idaho Lake that's yeah. always in the top 10. I am really surprised there's three lakes from Texas in there. Nothing against Texas. I just am somewhat well, surprised. Well, I mean, OHIV, I think, 
made a big push late in the year. I mean, you look at all the crazy share lunkers records, small mouth hybrids, large mouth that came out. And I think it was a lot of weather related yeah. things. I mean, that lake has always been good, but, yeah. uh, Malax is not in there. Yeah. In the, I mean, yeah, you could look at a, a number of things, but it, it did surprise me that the California Delta and clear Lake, because have, Chickamauga? I have yeah. not been hearing of massive things coming out of california or the delta lately of you i've heard a lot a little of bit a little bit sea but, lions eating stuff <laughs> a little bit but i i really really wish that they do the west coast swing next year but i don't think it's going to happen i think you're going to see a heavy a heavy dose of the same thing yeah and the That's lakes my are opinion. super low out there too aren't they right now I'm not sure on that. In California? Uh, obviously, Havasu is. But, um, or not Havasu, but me. There's no Louisiana, Louisiana or... Yeah. No Missouri. Missouri Lakes. Yeah, no Ozarks. Interesting. Yeah. Not so, bad. I mean, I, I could I, you could make a case for all of those. That, that yeah. Just the lake, the Jordan Lake in North Carolina. I mean, I know they got to throw something in there to make you talk yeah but that one really surprised me i i'm gonna work on trying to get somebody on to to talk about how they come up with this list i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do that but i will reach out to see if we could have somebody come on the show and talk about how they arrive to the breakdown because they do break it down by region also right the top lakes in the region. So. I think that's a cool we'll thing. See. They've been doing that. That becomes an Long annual time. an annual thing for them that they do over there. Bassmaster provides yeah. a lot of content after the season is over. And also, I would assume, provides a, a boost for the yeah. economy of some of those lakes. I mean, I've, I've been to numerous lakes where you see, hey, yeah. we're, a, we're a top 100 lake on for Bassmaster.com. You go into the tackle store and stuff, gives their tourism department something to kind of hang their hat on. Yeah, that's a great point because what is the influence of this list? What is the economic impact on these areas that make that list? So uh, I will continue to work, see if I can get somebody on to explain the whole process with that. All right, last thing, and then we're going to take a break and get to Mark Copley from the iCast floor. Did he have to ICAST. break into iCast? To, no. to tour us around? Is it one no. of those deals where the floor is closed? You, you've no. done that. You know, you slide into the Classic Expo <laughs> or you slide into iCast early and you, you have like, you're supposed to be helping yeah. set up, but you do like a 20 minute hot lap. No. And you have your credential. You just flip it around backwards so they can't see that you're, they're just like, oh, that guy's supposed to be setting up. Yeah. And you walk with a purpose. You can do a whole lap of the show yeah. and see everything that's set up and then go to the booth that you're supposed to be at. Yeah. You ever done that? You've been in those big oh, expos yeah. where you're the only oh, one yeah. in there? Yeah. It's kind of cool. I, it is kind of cool. Very cool. All right. The last thing, a big shout out to Matt in Alabama. He sent me an email, and, and I am really, really intrigued by this email that he sent me, and I'm going to work on trying to get somebody. I will say this. I called my financial advisor to see if he would be willing to come on the show and talk about this, and he's not comfortable. He doesn't know a whole lot about it. Uh, I, I was somewhat surprised about this. And what I'm talking about is NFTs. Do you know what an NFT is? I don't know. It stands for non-fungible token. And it is a, a huge trend in a lot of the digital world today where a non-fungible token is a unit of data that's stored on a digital ledger called a blockchain. Is this that thing you were talking about where you like buy moments or something? Well, it, it's like pictures. It could be artwork, photos, but then audio, you're the video, only one stuff. who has the right to it. The point that he was making when he sent me this email, and and I I am working on trying to get somebody on the show to discuss this, whether or not digital content that is captured by these right here, the could, computers, no, the blue dots, oh, could be NFTs. And could be a negotiable item to where, let's say somebody's done and they're finished and they're not going to fish tournaments anymore, that they actually sell those waypoints as NFTs. What's the difference between just selling the waypoints and selling them as NFTs? That's what I'm trying to find out. Is it out. the NFT you can't give it to anyone else? Or That's what I'm trying to find out. I'm very confused with this. And I feel like you buy NFTs with cryptocurrency. You can. Yeah. I feel like you just go way down the wormhole. 
you can. And it is a fascinating subject. Uh, might bore some people out there, but it raises a pretty good question on these things right here, these blue dots. What is the marketability of those blue dots? It's interesting. I remember, so this is a couple months ago. I remember you were having a business conversation and you thought, you know, what's the next thing, mm -hmm. right? The next thing. Yeah. The next YouTube, the next website, the next... Yeah. live stream and you brought up nfts yeah and this was I, once again brought up by a fan matt in alabama he emails me all the time and uh i am working fungible i am working on a, a number of things but really i i am fascinated by this and i can't recall and if anybody out there knows i cannot recall anybody let's just say retiring and selling this is not even this their is blue an, dots. This is an NPR.org article, and it's a whole article on how no one knows what the heck they are. <laughs> I agree. I think we just go to iCast. I'm ready to well, see Well, I'm not going to dive into it right now, dude. I'm trying to get the expert. Oh, I'm not the expert. But, but I wanted to recognize I, well, Matt the, for bringing N this up. NPR is saying there's no one that's an expert, that it's just a <laughs> giant muddled mess. Uh, in their opinion. Is that an opinion Still, piece? Still, what exactly do you get when you buy an NFT? This question, un this is an NPR, <laughs> folks, remember. This question unleashes a fury of debate among NFT enthusiasts. The yeah. answer is not simple. Are you buying what amounts to an internet trophy, clout, a feeling, a digital collector's uh, item? Great question. Don't know. So I'm looking. I am searching. You're buying a code that manifests as images. Oh, that clears things up. <laughs> All right, we're going to take our break here on a Tuesday. Come back with Mark Copley live from ICAST. Everybody stay tuned. We'll be right back. Elite FS puts the full range of Lorenz fish finding tools at your fingertips. Find fish with active imaging 3-in-1 with Fish Reveal. Target fish with active target live sonar and watch fish react to your lure as it happens. Built-in C-Map contour plus charts make it easy to find key fishing areas. But best-in-class charts and powerful sonar is only the beginning. It's easy to build your fully networked FS system. From sonar and waypoint sharing to controlling the ghost trolling motor and power poles. Lorenz Elite FS. Targeting fish just got easier. Basscat's legendary 20-foot platform has been paired with angler-approved accessories for 2021. Puma FTD features the proven hull used by many of the top names in bass fishing today, backed by a transferable lifetime warranty. The Puma FTD boasts a full team deck concept which enhances efficiency for you and your tournament partners. Turnkey tournament winning performance. The Puma FTD SP from Basscat. Everybody loves to chase bass on the water. But is your most valuable asset protected when it's not on the water? Empire Covers can preserve your bass boat against even the harshest conditions. When the storm is coming, that bass boat needs to be protected. Check out EmpireCovers.com for all your cover needs. Empire Covers is the ultimate solution when it comes to protecting that asset. Empire Covers is the ultimate solution in easy protection for your truck, for your boat, for your car, anything that needs to be protected from the elements. BTL listeners can receive free shipping plus an extra 15% off their entire order on EmpireCovers.com. Just use the promo code BTL at checkout. Empire Covers. Protect what you love. Let's face it. Fishing electronics are no longer an afterthought. They've become a necessity. And at the Bass Tank, our experts match you with the right electronics, provide professional installation, and educate you to help maximize your catching results while providing support along the way. <laughs> because let's be honest, it's about catching, not just fishing. And when you're ready for better results, join the Bass Tank team. Visit us today on Facebook or go to thebasstank.com. Monofilament. 
when, where, how, why, when would I fish it? Gerald, there's a lot of lines out there. When do I choose monofilament? Anytime your bait's floating. How about that? If you're gonna throw top water and you don't wanna throw it on a light braid, throw it on monofilament. For instance, I just left the Sabine a few months ago. I was throwing a, a small popper on 14 pound Supernatural. The line floats super right, but it, the castability of it will blow your mind. Supernatural monofilament to me is anything you wanna so, throw on the surface Go with monofilament. Anything that's going on in the water, you can go with fluoro. All right, we are back on a Tuesday, ready to go to our special guest. And uh, he's in Orlando. Yeah, this iCast show opens tomorrow, but we're going to have Mar Mark Copley on today to give us. A little sneak peek at what's going on in Orlando, so let's bring him in now. Mark, how you doing, man? Gentlemen, I couldn't be any better. I'm at the... Just think about this. This didn't happen last year. We're here. Yeah, you're right. We're here. We're live. There's no NFTs here. <laughs> <laughs> well, there might be. We don't know what it is. We're well, trying to figure true. that out, Mark. That's true. There may be... There may be one on, on some of our product here, and we don't even know it. Yeah. So th this is kind of a sneak peek before the festivities get underway tomorrow, and people can kind of see, man, there's plenty of stuff still being set up in the convention area. Yeah, honestly, we've been looking around. Our booth is pretty much set. Uh, our uh, The company that puts our all of our structures together for us, they started Saturday afternoon. And we're pretty much done yesterday with it. Today is pretty much cleanup day for us. But uh, as I look around, uh, there's a, and you can see behind me, there's a lot of people that are nowhere near. And the show opens tomorrow, so they got a long day ahead of them. But uh, we're happy we're here, and uh, it's, you know, it's great to be back at ICAST. Mark, how much work goes into this show for everything that you're involved with, with uh, the company that you represent? There is a ton of, for, three days of actual open show you've got pr pretty much we work year round on it because there's things that you have to do you know you have to work with your the companies that at least for the bigger boots uh we have the companies that we work with you know we've uh, added on uh some brands uh we added uh, zevco quantum bought salmo a couple of years ago so but it's it's a it's a 365 thing that the uh, I'll start uh, one of my new duties is I'm going to be taking over trade shows and uh, starting next week when we get back, I'll be reaching out to our company and, and start talking about what we're going to do for next year. Wow. All right. I'm excited. You said your area, which is the strike King and the lose area, you guys are pretty much set up and ready to go, right? We are. We've got uh, a lot of great new products uh, this year, some revamping, uh, of some reels to really make them even better than they were. Uh, our new signature series line of rods, which we're really excited about, uh, A, because of price point, but B, because of how good they are. And, you know, we work with, with five pros on these, and it's it's the actions that they use uh, that, you know, and, it's, and they're arguably the five best guys in the world uh, at, at what they do. You've got guys like Greg Hack some guy named Van Dam. <laughs> but even Mark Zona helped us design our, our spinning uh, rods. So, uh, yeah, a lot of work went into it. But, yeah, man, it's exciting. It's, uh, it's, I'm glad to be here, glad to see the stuff out. Uh, we've got some new reels that have come out. We've got stuff on the Strike King side. Uh, uh, some stuff that I think Matt was, is probably going to be interested in when we take a look at it in a little bit. But, uh, All right. Yeah, it's uh, it's exciting stuff. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Mark, how do you decide when to bring something to iCast? You see stuff that's like guys are using six months before, and then you see it at iCast. You see other stuff at iCast that isn't available for a year after it. Is that kind of a trial and error as to, hey, we're going to have it done by this, or it's already done and we missed last year's iCast? Or is there a scientific formula to when you introduce it to iCast as to when... 
the listeners of our show can go on a website, can go on a major retailer, order it, and have it two days later. Because it seems like it's different for every single company that debuts stuff at iCast. It is. And for us, it's, you know, and there, we start out trying to make sure that we have ample, A, you've got to have the product here to release it. So uh, we want to make sure that we have it here. But what a lot of people forget that this show is really talking about the 2022 tackle year, not the 2021. Uh, so, you know, we're, you know, and I guess it's different from, say, the classic because it's not a consumer show. This is about uh, the media are here, uh, the dealers from, from the small mom and pops all the way up to, you know, to the big box stores. So uh, it's, to, it's to get them here, get them to purchase the orders, and, uh, make purchase orders, and then we get them the product. And usually, though, even though it's for a 2022 tackle year, you will start seeing uh, product on, on for, in most cases, uh, probably – late August to November, sometime in that time frame in there, right after mm-hmm. ICAST. So real quick, that everyone sees ICAST and they see this stuff, and I know you have to be a member of the media, but like, if you haven't been there, one of the things that it is, and it, correct me if I brought here, but you guys have like little meeting rooms, little cubicles, cubicles. Mark Jeffries <laughs> knows all about the cubicle oh, yeah. life. But you set it up so like if I, if I have eight tackle shops, I can go to iCast and I can walk around and I can say, I'm going to have a meeting with Strike King because I want to get their products into my store. You go in with it and you do a deal to where, hey, we're going to outfit your store with these products for the upcoming year. You guys have guaranteed sales. They know what's coming into their store that they can promote. They can have the SKUs, the shelf space, that whole nine yards, and that deal is done. So you guys are making money and they know what's going to be in their store in the future. And they walk around and say, I like that. I like that. I want to see this. This would sell in our market. And you do that over and over from smaller deals all the way up to the biggest retailers correct exactly. roundabout way that's it actually i just walked into one of those cubicles and you can see behind me you know we've got stuff on the walls we've got rod racks in here we've got base hanging on the wall uh there's a table in here uh and you can shut the doors have meetings uh and and this is really where the bulk of the of the business goes on at i guess around these meeting rooms or as mark would say cubicles <laughs> yeah, I have plenty of experience with those <laughs> in my early years. Hey, hey, Mark, I, I want to know, yep. a lot of festivities take place prior to the opening. What I mean by that is there's a lot of dinners, there's a lot of get-togethers. What is the vibe this year at ICAST uh, as far as the excitement because of the fact that last year there wasn't an ICAST? Well, I think one thing that I've noticed, uh, and, and this is, I started coming to ICAST in 2010. That was my first year here. One of the things that I've noticed is there is more people here earlier. Most people come rolling in on a Tuesday. Uh, if you're with setup crews, you come in on a Monday. But, like, we came in Sunday afternoon so we could be here and get started. Uh, but it wasn't just us. There's a ton of people here getting set up. So. A lot of people here earlier is the biggest thing that I've noticed. And, yeah, there is there's kind of a spunk in there. I, you know, from what I understand, there's some people who are not here this year, uh, some that were not allowed to, to leave their countries to be here because this is an international. This is not just, you know, the U.S. It's a, it's a international show. So uh, there are some people who are, who are not going to be here, unfortunately, some of the media, uh, some of our friends in, uh, in the U.K. were not able to come. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's exciting. There's, it's, uh, it's kind of like it, it's fresh. So it's Mark yeah. Davis, who y'all know, uh, saltwater Mark Davis said something about the other day. He goes, so is this my consecutive ICAST or are we starting over? Cause we didn't have one last year. It, ICAST actually stands for, and I had to look this up. I've heard it before, but I couldn't remember. It stands for International Convention of Allied Sport Fishing Trades. Yep. So it's not just bass stuff. I mean, you got no, all sorts of stuff, fly fishing stuff, salt, I mean, everything across the board. And there's been a big push in recent years to make sure that, those, that all of them are here, too. Uh, I have not seen any of the the fly fishing company yet, but 
it's still kind of hard to tell who's here uh, because there's still signs that even hung all these crates are still around for, for some people. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, that's good stuff. It's, uh, it is definitely, it's not just bass. Yeah, one more thing before we get to the actual stuff, stuff that's yeah. covered up. People are like, just show the stuff already. Yeah. But here's a little hack, Mark, that I do. Well, you know, iCast can get crazy. Yeah, people everywhere yes, and stuff. Can. When you just when you need a moment of serenity, just ease into the fly fishing aisle. There's typically some mu- everything is like a sage, a natural color. It's a lot calmer. People earthy toads. It's just a lot calmer vibe in the fly fishing aisles than it is in the flashy bass fishing aisles with the jerseys and the metallic stuff. Fly fit, it'll just calm you down. Just take a stroll down there, and then you're, you're good to go for the next <laughs> couple hours. If you lose your zen, you just go to the fly fishing. A hundred percent. But be careful because they have that casting tank, and if you walk across the casting tank, you get the – you ever done you – know, you know what I'm talking about where you test the exactly rods? And there's always someone that's just their head down, and they walk across it, and yeah. they, get, they get a tip it to the head. A tip it to the head. That's right. <laughs> All right, man. What can you show us? Show the fans uh, some of the stuff. If it's okay, if it's what is that legal, or whatever. I don't know. No, not not for the fans. All right. All right. So, what are you going to show us? All right. So, with this high tech phone of mine, I'm going to yeah. switch it around so you can actually see. So, it'll be a little clunky for a half second here, and then I'll get. That's to all right. Flip around so we can see product. Man, that's a bad feeling when you walk in and you still see crates that haven't been unpacked. If you're an exhibitor, <laughs> not a oh, good feeling. No, not a good feeling. All right, I think we're close. We should be. We have a black screen now. Yeah. We, we tested this out yesterday and it worked flawlessly. Can you hear me? I can, I hear, can you. hear you. We just can't see anything. Yeah, the, we don't the have anticipation is palpable. <laughs> there oh, we go. there we go. There we go. All right. So first and foremost, this is our Sig Series rods uh, that we just released. So I'm gonna actually turn it where the where it reads correct. Okay. And try to get some close-ups for you. This is one of Van Dam's rods. Uh, this is the Square Bill Red Eye Shad rod. Uh, each time we so there's five guys in in the series, and they are it's Kevin, uh, Mark Rose, Andy Montgomery, Mark Zona, and Greg Hackney. So we went to their strength. Hackney obviously is a flipper and a, and a pitcher. So we've got three actions with him. Uh, it's the frog rod, a pitching rod, and a flipping rod. Uh, Bar- with Zona, they're all the uh, spinning rods. So we've got a power finesse. We got shaky head. And Zona's favorite, he calls it the tube cracking special. And Zona throws a lot of tubes because uh, most of it, you know, he's up north quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and then there's an all purpose rod. Mark Rose, well, he's known for ledge fishing. So uh, we've got his, we've got a swim bait. Carolina rig, a deep crankbait rod, and a, and a worm jig rod. Andy Montgomery's known for skipping and for throwing a blade of jig. So we've got two skipping actions. One of them is a seven foot one, the other is a six nine, and then there's the blade of jig thunder cricket rod. Next, we've got so much stuff, it's hard to know what to, what to tell you <laughs> next. This is another one that was really proud of is the xd cranking series rods they are they are fine-tuned there's there's five actions there's a 3xd a 5xd a 6xd a 8xd and this is the 10xd that i'm holding in my hand and all of these rods are fine-tuned to each of those baits this was wow. a brainchild of phil marks and ken eubanks uh they before phil passed uh him and Ken spent a lot of time in the boat, and they got talking about, we don't have any rods that are dedicated to mm-hmm. our XD baits. And so that's it kind of came out of that. The, the best thing about these, they're a 139 price point at, at MSRP. So very affordable. The Signature Series, are they start at 169 
So it's not like we're building these all these high price rods that not everybody can afford. Right. So uh, just very exciting. You know, we've got we never really got to fully release the KVD rods uh, from when he came to lose. Mm-hmm. But you're ta- these are ninety nine dollar rods. And ninety nine dollars. Ninety nine dollars. And these are the actual rods that Kevin fishes. He fishes more of these than he does the signature series. And uh, we've got some uh, glass composites. We've got some uh, uh, in the cranking. Uh, we've got uh, uh, just true composite rods uh, and then spinning rods. So there's a, I, I don't even, I, I think there's like 20 different actions in these KVDs. Mark, here's what I want you to do with Kevin. I've talked about this before. You watch him load up and cast a rod compare it with like a a normal a normal touring pro is there any way you can somehow measure the amount of torque and force he is putting on his rod when he is casting a 6xd as opposed to a average angler i would love to know that it's like the club head speed in golf that you can measure i think you would find that kvd's club head speed quote unquote far superior to the average crankbait caster I would not disagree with you. Uh, and I actually have a little bit of experience in that. And several years ago, back when I was filming our Pro Team Journal show, Kevin hit me in the face with a spinnerbait that he loaded Ooh. up on. Ooh. And, and it, it, it put a hole in my cheek. Uh, yeah, he, first of all, he lets, he lets it hang out off the rod about two or three feet. And then, you know, he just, he, you're right, his club head speed, for mm-hmm. lack of a better term. Is unbelievable. I would love to see someone who has the capabilities and funding to do that to actually kind of measure the amount of, like I said, the amount of torque, rod speed, however you want to do it, that he generates. We need to come up with that somehow. <laughs> well, let's get back. So, as you can tell, I've moved over to our real counter. Yeah. Uh, this is one uh, that Andy worked on and Kevin worked on. This is the Pro SP. Uh, this only holds 40 yards of, of uh, line. This is a dedicated skipping or uh, pitching reel. And as you can see right here on the <clears throat> on the dial, there's a skipping zone set in here. I will tell you this. I've never been able to skip a bait caster. It, it takes a, a pretty good amount of, of, of technique to be able to do that. Andy Montgomery had me skipping within five minutes with that reel. Wow, and, and we're skipping a buzz bait, which I'll show you in a little bit. The the new skipping buzz bait, uh, that's one of the new Strike King products. Then here's another one, the new BB One Pro, totally redesigned, new ergonomic handles, much more sleek. Uh, one of the things that that we're really proud of on our reel is this T two pinion gear, uh, which is only in our, it's only in our product. And so we've th- we've gone and, and updated older products that did not have it in it, but was still really good reels and made them even better. Uh, but that's what we did with that BB1 Pro. It's got the it's and I set it back, but let me grab it again. You can see I don't know how well they can see because of the lighting here, but it's got a deep spool, so it's great for cranking. Yeah, they can see it. We can see it. Uh, it's just it's it's a phenomenal reel. I've actually thrown this one quite a bit and. Am in love with with the smoothness and, and the castability. Uh, it, it's just it's one of the cool ones that, that we really like, uh, and, and are glad to have it out. Another one that we're really excited about having out is our new spinning reel. This one that Zona worked with us quite a bit. You've you've seen the Hypermag bait casting reel, where this is the Hypermag spinning reel, and okay, you can see it's got a smaller it's got the wind grip on the handle but it's a smaller it's not that big it's a, it's a little more fitting to your hand super smooth drag on this thing lightweight uh we're finally getting you know into a, a true lightweight spinning reel um this will be in the in the 200 and 300 series starting off uh but uh we're really excited to get this one out and 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 get something in a, in, a, in a little bit higher price point spinning reel. Those are going to start at 159 at a, as a MSRP. 
<clears throat> so really excited about those. Hey, and Mark. Hey, yes. hey, hey, on the bay casting reel, what were the gear ratios? People are wanting to know what the ratios were. So I don't have my uh, thing sheet. in front of me, uh, my <laughs> cheat sheet in front of me. Yeah. Uh, I'll get that for them. This is a, I believe this one's a 7.5. I'm trying to find it. Okay. So this is a 7.5 to 1. I believe there's a there's not a like in the in the fives, uh, yeah, uh, speed, but that I think we do have a six five in that as as well. Okay, uh, I know that I know that that like a five zero or a five four that's really popular with, with guys that are crank based. Um, but we just we have not done. That's not to say that we won't come out with that in the future. Okay, all right, all good, man. So uh, I was going to show you, uh, I had showed you the uh, the Kevin Rods. We also did reels with Kevin, uh, and this is uh, the spinning reel in the KVD series. And I don't remember price. I think this is 139 but don't quote me on that one. I can get you, for your listeners that, that are wanting to know actual prices, we'll get all that to you. Uh, if they've got any questions, just, Mark, you reach out to me, and we'll get them the answer. Uh, okay. But... It's a mid-price point reel that's still really good quality. That's just what Kevin uses. And, you know, he's pretty picky about what he uses. He just doesn't uh, use anything. Oh, yeah. So, And that's the cool thing about Kevin is he fishes exactly the same thing. So if you were to call in and place an order and pick it up, it's the same thing that he does. He, it comes right from the same warehouse. There's not special, like, prototypes that he has that look like he actually fishes <laughs> all of this that's a, that one of the most questions i get do that yeah i get that so much people are like well you know you fished with those guys at media events what's their stuff really like and i'm like for the most part i'm like it's what you walk into academy or bass pro shops or cabela's and buy no 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 like they got soup <laughs> souped up no it's like normal stuff that everyone they just know how to cast it in better spots than you yeah it's uh, like hackney for example hackney has a some Special metal rods uh, under the Hack Attack series that, that are only sold at Academy. That's what he fishes. He orders yeah. the same. It's yeah. not, yeah. And they're, uh, they're not a high price point rod. That's a, people yeah. think that all, all the pros fish all these real high dollar rods and will, and some of them do, but there's a lot that do not. I'm never going to be able to ask this again, but like Mark would know because they just designed the stuff with Kevin. Is Kevin a pain in the butt to work with on this stuff? <laughs> I could, I could either. I, I mean, what is it like to design something with Kevin? Like, are you? Do you look down at your phone and you're like, oh, it's Kevin again, fourth time today? Or is it like, does he know exactly what he wants and it's it's a, a smooth process? No, he knows exactly what he wants, and it's not. Yes, I do get a lot of calls from Kevin. It's funny, I got four calls from him <laughs> yesterday. One because I accidentally butt dialed him and he was calling me back. Did I miss a call? <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'm gonna walk around over to the strike and stuff, but no, it's right. great. All right, we're gonna get Just, to see some I'll stuff that wiggles. Of, give you a little glimpse of Mr. Crappie here. You know, that's that's a life size photo of Wally right there. <laughs> Dude, I've been around him a couple times, and whatever you picture Wally Marshall in your head, he's twice as Mr. Crappie in person. Yeah, like he lives up to the persona a hundred percent. He is. He, he definitely is. All right, Matt, how much? Do you spend fishing cold water and in, in the early early season? You, you spend a, quite a, a bit lot of recently, yeah, a lot recently. All the, I mean, all of your thing starts around here in February, so February, March, April. Well, you're gonna like this. This is the new chick magnet that we work with Andy Morgan on, and a buddy of Andy's name, uh, Marion Tipton, uh, they call him Tip, was the one who originally designed this bait as a balsa bait. And so this is now, it's got the circuit board lip, but it is not balsa. It's made out of plastic. But Andy Morgan uh, worked hard on this one. Uh, and we went through several uh, revisions on this before we actually got it right. Uh, that looks really chick, good. That's uh, Blue Rock Crawl, which I love that color. Yeah. It's got some gray underneath it. and uh, We've got a new color. Based off an old color, this is Sexy Shad 2.0. And 
it's it's really <laughs> one of my favorite. It's so natural looking, and it's just got that little hint of, of chartreuse down the side. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, this this thing is going to thrive early season in cold in colder water situation. Uh, but that's one of the new ones that we got out. Another one that I know Matt is going to like. Matt, you throw a six XD, don't you? I do. Well, you're going to like this because this is the six XD hard knock. It's the same bait, but with a hard knocking sound on it instead of the, instead of a rattle. And you know how you can get a ledge and and they get fired up and then all of a sudden the bite stops. Well, you got to change up something. This way, you can change up the sound and, and fire that school right back up. Hmm. But nice. I'll show you. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you can. Can y'all hear that? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A single knocker. It's a single knocker, and it's not tungsten. It's it's what what we did is take, uh, and you can see it, the chamber right here on this one. Oh yeah. But it's just it's just one bead. Uh, and it's 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 the same metal as what the that's in the regular the six XD, but they just made it one solid ball instead of a bunch of tiny beads. Hey Mark, on the yeah. Andy Morgan, on the Andy Morgan bait, do you know how much that's going to retail for? <laughs> yeah, I believe it's seven ninety nine. Okay. Uh, nope. I take it back. They actually have it on the sign. It's nine ninety nine. Okay. You guys have kind of dabbled in the. Didn't you guys used to have like a balsa bait that came out? I'm trying to think six, seven years ago, like a balsa shop deal that kind of has a little bit of a cult following now of guys who are trying to get their hands on it. Oh yeah, if I could find some, I, I would. I, I don't want to say that I would pay a good penny for them. I probably would. <laughs> uh, yes. So it was under the old custom shop, and they were yeah, they that was it. Balsa. Uh, it was the flat shad and the strike shad. And the uh, strike shad was kind of more minnow, <clears throat> minnow shaped, and the flat shad was, was pretty close to this, uh, like the chick magnet here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great name. Who came up with the name? Uh, that's Crispin. Really? Well, and you can guess why it's called that. <laughs> pretty cool name. All right, and, and then we had, well, and, and then think what's about the. It. Oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, that's where that's where Andy Morgan cut his teeth was on Lake Chicago. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. it was just a natural. I mean, yeah, I love the name. And then the six XD mm-hmm. is called what now? The, the hard knock. Okay. And as there you, you have can it. see, and I'll show you here on the bottom, and this is the way you tell the difference. It's it's stamped on the bottom, uh, so because otherwise you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Just looking at it, they didn't have that stamp on. How many of those do you ship good. to Kevin every year? How many? How many six uh, XDs do, do you think get sent to Kalamazoo, Michigan, on a <laughs> yearly basis? Just ballpark. I, I don't want to. Re- I don't want to <laughs> reveal that because uh, it would the people would know where all our inventory went. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, is it a pallet? Is it a box? No. Does it require a forklift? Just a box. It's got to be a box, Mark. It's a big box. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a forklift. Jeez. All right, continue, Mark. I know guys who require the forklift. I, I, I know who you're talking about, so let's true? keep going. It's absolutely true. <laughs> yep, I don't, trust me. I know those guys, too. Yeah. All right, the other one is the, the new skipping buzz that Andy uh, Montgomery worked on. And believe it or not, this little wire that I don't let me get with that. Did you see the little wire that goes from... Yeah, uh, to the, from end to, to to the right there in front of the bait. Yeah, that's what it keeps it flat, where you can skip it. So I like was telling leash. you about, yeah, almost, almost like a leash, exactly. So I was telling you about Andy uh, Montgomery teaching me how to skip. Well, that's what he was teaching me to skip with. Probably one of the hardest things to skip, just simply because if you've got you know you've got a blade on there that moves and all that kind of stuff. It is amazing how well this bait skips. And now you can get up underneath docks and throw something at them, you know, that they haven't seen a whole lot of. And that's coming nice. in four colors. Got it coming in the pink, the white, uh, black, and green pumpkin. And oh. what's that gonna what's that gonna retail for? Skipping uh, buzz. Um, they don't have uh sorry, uh eight ninety nine. Okay. 
And so, most of the stuff, most of the stuff that you're showing us right now is going to be available in 2022, correct? Correct. Some of this, like the skip and buzz, may be pretty close to end of August in the stores. Oh, okay. Uh, the hard knock and the chick magnet, it's probably going to be closer to November, maybe January. Uh, which is typical. You know, every once in a while, we can get baits that are pretty, that are readily, you know, pretty, pretty, real, uh, pretty, pretty close to being ready and, and in the stores right after I cast. Uh, but for the most part, it's, it's two to three months after I cast is when you'll actually see them in the stores. All right. That's good stuff the right thing, there. Man, man I got to show you these. This is our new fire crawl color that we have, uh, brought it in several different things here you see the ocho in the back and the menace rage bug we've got it in the the baby structure jig and the hybrid hunter there it is in the chick magnet and the thunder cricket 1.5 hard knock and then a red eye and i'm really excited about this color and you can like even on this blade here wow the detail that goes into it and it's just let me show you the head there's even, uh, you can see the little craw, crawfish marks on the head there. It's just, it's really a good looking color. So, uh, that is cool. Very excited yeah. about that. Yep. And that's going to be coming in more things as, uh, as we go down the line, too. So, very all right, I'm nice. going to flip it back around to me. Okay. There you have it, folks. Kind of a sneak peek at some of the stuff that Lose and Strike King is going to display at ICAST this year and well on their way to making it to the stores to where you can take part in making that purchase. I know that some of the crappie guys are also ex a little bit excited about that real thin spooled reel that only holds like 40 yards yeah. on it. Like the guys who are dinking and dunking, as you like to say. <laughs> You know, you just put 30, 40 yards of that braid on there. You got a super light reel that's high speed that, I mean, because you're not really using the casting feature for the yeah. crappie, but it just makes your line line management much easier. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Is Mark it's coming exciting back? Times. Yeah. Remember, it takes him 20 seconds for the flip to sure. occur. There Here he we, is. There we go. Here we we go. got you. So, anyway, yeah, no, man, I'm, we're really excited. Um, open up tomorrow morning and uh, done on on friday and head back to columbia south carolina on saturday and but uh excited to be here and ready to get this thing rolling all right man uh, i know you're super busy and can't thank you enough mark for taking time out to show some of the new stuff that you guys are offering and i i know the fans appreciate it but uh man you are you are a busy busy person now and you're wearing multiple hats how difficult is that? Do you ever get to fish anymore? Uh, when I have a riders event, usually when I get to fish. Okay. So I try so to like have twice a year. Riders yeah, twice a year. <laughs> 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 the funny wow. thing is, is I probably fish for smallmouth more than I do for largemouth now, because really? we have a, we have an event in New York in March where I actually get to fish. So uh, I, I cherish that time. All Nothing right. wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. TV stuff is going to continue. I know you have so many video projects going on, and some of that stuff is really, really good. Pro Team Journal, Kings of Bass. If people get a chance, just go to YouTube and search Kings of Bass Season 2. Oh, it's the awesome. Stuff I, the stuff our new crew is doing, is so, they're so talented. And uh, it, it's an it's a in-depth look behind the scenes of these guys and, and how they – go through a season uh it's not about teaching fishing techniques like mm -hmm. the protein journal is it is about these guys and the story behind them and we're highlighting six of them uh kevin zona mark rose jeff sprague greg hackney and andy montgomery and it's uh you you can't watch a show about andy montgomery and not just fall in love about because he is so likable yeah. That's why I picked him on my hypothetical team yesterday. <laughs> I, I picked Hackney. We had a fake draft. <laughs> I picked Andy Bucko. And then also on your uh, social media, the losing the striking, you get you guys are investing in having guys on location for 
high-end content during all the events there too i've also noticed uh yep. uh that you stepped up a lot of the uh, social media content on what's going on throughout the we're, year on tour we are trying to uh, to make it known and, and just get the word out you know we're also we also are investing in high school and, and college kids because we know they're our future and you know we want to win them at an early age but mainly we want to get them out fishing because mm-hmm. the more people that fish you and i hey. and matt we can we can keep doing what we do yeah hey real quick uh, a couple people want to know how deep does the chick magnet go about three to three to six feet. Okay, it's kind of what. I think. And I'm serious. After you get that technology to measure rod tip speed, torque, and stuff, you have to debut it on BTL, though. Yeah, that's the you, that's the rule. Once you have that to where you get the numbers, it's going to be like, I mean, you're gonna. I think you could turn that into a. Uh, you could turn that into like a stat. Then you could design rods based on that stat. Like, are you between this swing speed and this swing speed? This What's is the rod speed? for you. Here's what Kevin is. You guys can't reach it. That's why he casts farther. Now, if you're in this here, if you're just a lobber, then yeah. this is this is the range that you need to have. And boom, you just created a whole new. Yeah. Now, kind of like the golf thing that they have at Dick Sporting Goods. Yeah, where you swing and it's yeah. like you slice it and your club head speed is 11. You need a 460 cc with a noodle shaft because you stink. <laughs> You got that little pit area yeah. with the cage. You need the biggest sweet spot you could have. Whereas yeah. you get some other guy in there, and he's like, "You get the, you know, you get the blade irons because you're, you know, with the stiff shaft." Yeah, that's that's right. There's well, an idea, you guys Mark. Get the I like you get the exclusive on it. All right, very cool. Hey man, thanks for taking time out. I hope you have a great eye cast, and I will definitely catch up with you uh, in the coming weeks, Mark. Thanks, man. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. All right, man. Take care, Mark. Take care. See ya. There you have it. Mark Copley giving you a little sneak peek at what's going down at ICAST. going to get really tired of doing that little tour in about 72 hours. Do you not feel like Mark? Yeah. Say it's over. exhausting. What is your best ICAST story? Because I've got one. I've got an really? ICAST story that I don't think can be topped. Well, have at it. Because well, I, don't, I don't really have You don't have, have any good not ICAST really. stories? The the miniature golf trip last year was pretty epic when you hit the truck in the parking lot. Oh, when I hit the truck? Yeah. Yeah, I was go we were <laughs> I was going for the hole in one and it caromed. It caromed out and it we were on like the third story and it was bouncing and everybody had the oh no look like when you slice one off the golf yeah. off the tee. That was pretty fun. But mine is the first year that it was in Orlando. I was with Kevin Jarnigan in Blue Heron, right? Yeah, yeah. We were out. I think we were with someone from Field and Stream or something like that. Anyway, we went to the Oyster House, and we're up there just shucking oysters by the dozen. (laughs) And I slurped down an oyster, and I'm like, what is that? Found a pearl. That's right. I remember A legitimate oyster pearl. And she said, hey, we only find like two or three of those a year. And I carried it with me for a long time. Did I give it to you? No. What did I give you for good luck for your first surgery or one of your surgeries I, I, or I something? Don't I don't know. I've no. lost it along the way, but I carried that thing in my wallet for like five years. Yeah. Just a little just a little pearl. I did the value on it. Everything it was yeah. worth like 50 bucks. When ICAST was in Vegas, now there's some memories. Well, I don't remember it. That's the problem. <laughs> it's been so uh, I, I have no memory of that. I do know that when it was in Vegas, yeah. and this is the truth, there were numerous people who lost their jobs. Because their job was to do iCast, right? And be at the booth and stuff. And at 8 a.m. the next morning, the head yeah. boss guy's there. And they're like, where's Jimbo Billy Job? And they're like, I don't know. We saw him at 3 a.m. blacked out at the Luxor. Yeah. And then they straggle in at 1 p.m. the next day. There yeah. were some jobs lost due to poor life decisions at Vegas iCast. But yeah. it was fun. Yeah. 10 years ago. That was 10 years ago when iCast was there. Holy cow. 10 years because wow. that, that that was that next week is when i uh found out well i found out later but i was oh you were so upset at me that last year because oh. <laughs> i was still mildly intoxicated when our flight took off at seven in the morning but i was there was i not uh, it barely but i was there was yeah. i not barely you said yes, we're you were. leaving at 6 30 and i was it. ready to leave at 6 30 yeah you were you were Definitely. 
Definitely. No, that was when uh, I was diagnosed with MS. Yeah. You after that Vegas went trip. through the metal detector <laughs> and could not feel your right leg. It's like something's going on. Anyway, we're going to take a break. Come back. Wrap it up here on a Tuesday. Everybody stay tuned. We'll be right back. I've been my living on the water for over 20 years. For 14 years. For over 23 years. I've worn a bunch of different clothing brands over the years. Some companies big. And some companies small. All of them said they were making clothing for us. But none of them knew us. None of them were us. Except for one. Except for one. Except one. AFCO. 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 Fishing isn't part of us. It is us. Everyone, Brandon Polnick here. People always be asking me what I got tied on. And I'm like, X-Zone Lures. And they're like, Brandon, why you got X-Zone Lures tied on? And I'm like, let me show you why. The bite. Hey. Get out of there. Get out of there. Oh, yeah. Oh, Get in here. Oh, God. Giant. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I think you get the point. Pro-inspired, pro-designed, tested and proven by legends on the water, dominating the tournament trail for over 50 years. Everything you need, one legendary brand, Strike King. Hey guys, Major League Fishing Pro, Jacob Wheeler here with my new Signature Series line of rods with Ducket Fishing. We have my 7.2 crank and rod right here. Crankbaits can be very fickle and having the right, you know, having a lot of tip can be too much and having not enough tip can, you know, lose a lot of fish. So you really gotta be careful. If there's one or two techniques that I'm really, really adamant about having the perfect action is a crankbait, especially like a square bill, IDT6, um, you know, those medium running crankbaits in the springtime, when those fish's mouth are pretty tough, that's when I'm really, really, really on top of having my actions just perfect. There's one. You know what works. Now you need a bunch of them so you don't run yeah, out on yeah, your next yeah. fishing trip. The Big Bite Pro Packs feature 25 baits per pack at a price far below that of having to buy five packs of regular baits. Now the Pro Pack has a big brother, the Mega Pack. The Mega Pack features 100 of your favorite baits. With these, one bag is usually plenty to get through the day. It helps me stay organized, helps me save money, helps me catch more fish. All of us on the Pro Tournament Trail use Gamigatsu hooks. Why? Because they are absolutely the best. It's not about how many bites you get, it's how many you put in the boat. Gamakatsu makes hooks for every fishing style. We didn't come this far to lose fish. Did you? For more information, visit gamakatsu.com. The Little John family of crankbaits designed by top tour pro John Cruz have excelled at catching bass in any condition for years. They all feature a flat-sided design and paint jobs that are seldom seen in mass production bay. The Little John family also expands with new rattling versions of the Little John 50 and Little John 50 MD. Both of these baits are proven fish catchers that will now be available in rattling versions for stained and muddy water. They feature the same great action and diving depths as the original 50 and MD sizes. The Ned Rig. What rod should I be using with the Ned Rig? My favorite is the Denali Lithium Multi-Spin Rod. It's our seven foot four length, great Ned Rig rod. It's got a great sensitive tip on it. It's long enough where I can make long casts, which you're usually fishing clear water with a Ned Rig, and it's got enough backbone to get those fish in. So check it out, Denali Lithium Series, seven foot four, multi-spin.
All right, we are back, wrapping up Tuesday. I want to thank Mark Copley once again for taking time out from iCast to join us. Uh, and then tomorrow, need to let everybody know, no show tomorrow. Matt is going to be on the road, and I'm going to be taking care of a very minor health situation that... It's not related to your brain. No, it has nothing to do. It's just a, a simple, simple thing that needs to get taken care of as quickly as possible. And Wednesday was the first day that they could get me in. So get that done. And then we're back on Thursday with uh, the genius, Frank Scalish, back with day four. You realize and, uh, you have now coined the legend Harold Allen <laughs> and the genius, Frank Scalish. Yeah. Yeah. Two great dudes, man. I... I I gotta admit, I, I learned some stuff last night. Well, yeah, that's the whole point of it. it and and I was just sitting there doing work, uh, and and listening, and learned a ton of stuff with what Frank was saying. And I, I'm glad that we added day four. I've said it before on this yeah. show. Are we going to add day five? We're working on it. Seriously, what percentage is that going to happen? I would say right now, folks, for 2022, a day five is probably. 60 40 that it's going to happen. 60% yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, very excited about that. Uh, there is uh, what? Documents on the table is a good way of putting it. Now, whether or not the ink is dry yet, the ink is not dry yet. So, we shall see. But Ken uh, Duke's coming back, isn't he? He's coming back next week. Yeah. He's going to pinch it. Oh, and here's the other thing. One of the guest hosts that I selected from the uh, hundreds of requests that I received is actually going to be here in studio on Wednesday. Oh, really? Sitting right there. He lives in, I believe, uh, Knoxville. Knoxville. Tennessee. Did he drive in just to be No, 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 no. His parents live in Oklahoma City. He actually attended Putnam City North High School. Well, that's a coincidence. But he lives now in Knoxville, I believe, and, and uh, he's going to make a trip, see his parents, and then pinch hit for you on next Wednesday. Where? Uh, and we have Edwin Evers on the show on Wednesday, too. Fancy. Yeah. What were you going to say? Is that because you picked him for your team? Your hypothetical <laughs> no, I had team? him booked, man. I had him booked already. When's the next time you're going to get to fish? Uh... What what was that? How much was your cut, Mark? Cut up. Mark is going to go pick up a homeless guy, <laughs> tout him as the bass fishing wizard, and sell one on one sessions for 150 an hour. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. I would like to get somebody, not a homeless person. I would like to get somebody <laughs> to to come into the studio, sit there, and watch bass fishing for the first time. They've never seen it before. And just listen to their thoughts. Dude, here's on what, what you need seeing. to do. You need to bring in a co-host <laughs> that has never bass fished ever, ever. But who's up for it? And have them interview huh. Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea, but but no, I'm not going to do I mean, that to like Edwin, man. Someone who has never touched a rod or reel, who's like, That's I, a saw great idea. At the su- I saw a fish at the supermarket one time. What's that? Just get someone who's so foreign to it and then just <laughs> tee them up, mute your mic, and it's 15 minutes of them grilling Edwin. Uh, and just have at it. Who Ask would, away. Who would be the best guy to do that with? That uh, you could just... A sacrificial lamb, so to speak. <laughs> Uh, just they don't know what's up, but you're just like, hey, he's the co-host. I'm going to just let you guys chat for a while. I got something I got to take care of. And then, boom, <laughs> live for 15 minutes. Some dude running a show on bass fishing with one of the top guys in the world who knows nothing about bass fishing. Somebody said one of my students or players, maybe. Maybe one of the teachers that has absolutely I no mean, clue nothing about what fishing is about, what I do, or anything. Except coach basketball. It would be like me doing an, a show on NFTs. <laughs> hey. And having an expert on about it. Speaking of shows, have you watched this axe throwing stuff? I, I mean, watched I've a little bit it. of that. It's rather interesting. It's one of those deals like we've talked about before. You're just kind of channel surfing and you run across it and you're like, huh, okay. 
That's kind of interesting. The ones where they have the crowds there and the crowd's going nuts every time the dude hits whatever he's supposed to be hitting, pretty impressive. Yeah. I never thought... Well, that's darts. Darts, they, billiards. They had a axe-throwing bar. Yeah, that's at, popular. That's at Broken Bow, dude. Real popular now. That's the trendy yeah. thing to do is go to Trader Joe's and then go throw a couple axes in your flannel. <laughs> that person... Should, I like that suggestion. Should interview Cliff Crochet. Yeah, we need to get Cliff on. How good would that be? That would be some entertainment. Cliff Crochet. 15 minutes <laughs> one-on-one with someone who has never touched a fishing rod in their life. Oh, uh, that's pretty funny. Uh, oh, have them interview Steve Kennedy, Charlie Hartley said. Here's the problem. Steve Kennedy would just roll for 15 minutes. Yeah. Cliff Crochet would be like, uh... Okay? <laughs> like he would call him out on it. Hey, Charlie also wants to know when you're heading out for Oneida. I'm leaving tonight. Right. I got to mail some stuff, and then I got to get packed, and then I got to get some of the clothing, the final orders taken care of. I got a bunch of stuff to do because I didn't get anything packed. All right. Are we going to be able to talk to you next week? Yeah, as long as I got Maybe. service, I'm good to go. All right. Even if we just check in with you for... 10, 15 minutes during practice, see how you're doing on Monday and Tuesday. That is official practice, right? Yeah. Monday and Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday, half of Wednesday. Okay. I'm kind of intrigued with this idea of a complete new... I like it. Because... I'm going to work on that. To where you don't really... But you can't... You I'm can't, working on a uh, lot of stuff. Jeez. You can't like... They'll, you can't have them do any research. Just show up. Show up to the studio and get after it. Just be like, hey, are you up for an adventure? And this yeah. person is like, yes. And then they show up and you're like, you are hosting a bass fishing podcast. And we're live. <laughs> hey, everybody. We'll see. You like my blue dots, man. Was that it not very looks creative? looks like something Carolyn would do in her... <laughs> In her craft room. I have too many waypoints, man. Like Carolyn would do that in her craft room. Do I need to reduce the number of blue dots? Just Depends on how valuable they are, Mark. <laughs> oh, they're pretty valuable, all right. All right, that's going to wrap things up here on a Tuesday. We will be back on Thursday with Mr. Frank Scalish, day four coming at you. Matt, good luck to you. I know a lot of people out there are pulling for you. We will check in with you next week during practice. And uh, go make some things happen in New York, man. Sounds good. I'm All right. hoping to. All right. 12 pounds a day. <laughs> 41st place. Dinkin' and dunkin', man. As long as you get a check. I live in the grays there. All right. Everybody, that's it. Be safe. We are out of here. <laughs>